Hello, my name is Elena Bradley. My certification is in elementary and special education, and I chose to design a unit for a sixth grade class to study the civil rights movement. There are several reasons I chose to do my unit on the civil rights movement, aside from the fact that it is a topic of personal interest. It fits well with the sixth grade New York State Social Studies Learning Standard Number 1 because it looks at how diversity and culture have led to the development of the United States as we know it today. Over the course of the unit, students will consider the contributions of individuals and groups involved in the civil rights movement and how they created change in government policy as well as the attitudes and beliefs of the American people. Part of why I chose to do my unit on the civil rights movement is that as I explored different resources I might use for the unit, I discovered that there were many different types, including videos, mostly documentaries, text, a variety of interactive educational websites, powerful images, and music associated with the movement and the time period. Because I chose to design a unit for a sixth grade class, I surveyed three students within that age range. I spoke to two male students and one female student. There were some commonalities that the students shared, as well as some differences. All of the students said that they had access to computers at home, but used them with varying degrees of supervision. One student had a time limit on his use, but said that his parents would waive that for schoolwork. All of the students I interviewed said that they used the computer primarily for social networking, such as Facebook or instant messaging, and for looking up topics of personal interest. I felt that this was important because students were already doing informal research, and this understanding could easily be brought into the classroom to discuss how to do formal research. For example, when looking up information on a favorite musician, what website seems more accurate, the band's website, a primary resource, or a website created by a fan, a secondary resource. When I asked students how technology is incorporated into their classrooms, they mostly mentioned how the teacher uses technology, such as the smart board and PowerPoints to accompany lectures. Student use involved mostly word processing and some PowerPoint. The students' familiarity with other software varied based on their personal interests. I found it interesting that the students all thought of technology in the classroom as primarily a tool for the teacher's use. When I explained the multimodal response journal I was working on for this class, the students all expressed interest in doing similar types of projects. I feel that technology can be incorporated as a resource for learning as well as a way for students to demonstrate what they have learned in a new format rather than just essays and tests. I tried to incorporate what I have learned from my survey while planning my unit. As I started thinking about how to put together a unit on the Civil Rights Movement, I realized that I needed to begin by discussing the Jim Crow laws that were put in place after the Civil War. In order to understand the actions of the people involved in the fight for African American rights, students first have to understand why they were fighting. I would start by reading Langston Hughes' poem, Merry-Go-Round, to the class. It goes like this. Where is the Jim Crow section on this merry-go-round, mister, cause I want to ride? Down south, where I come from, white and colored can't sit side by side. Down south on the train, there's a Jim Crow car, on the bus we're put in the back. But there ain't no back to a merry-go-round. Where's the horse for a kid that's black? I think that it is a really powerful introduction to the concept of Jim Crow laws because it is written from a child's perspective and shows how segregation affects all aspects of life. It is impossible to escape it. I also found a lot of really great online resources that I think students will enjoy exploring. I would schedule computer lab time for students to explore the website for the PBS documentary, The Rise and Fall of Jim Crow. Students would listen to three of the personal narratives in the Jim Crow Stories section in order to better understand how racism was institutionalized and the effect that it had on people's everyday lives. Then I would have them create a comic strip depicting the events described in one of the narratives. I would also ask the students to look at the interactive maps that include details about specific Jim Crow laws and the major race riots that occurred in the United States. I would have them reflect on why they think certain events occurred in certain areas. 
What effect did geography have on the enforcement of Jim Crow laws and why? Another way that I would demonstrate the injustices that African Americans face is by having the students take the 1965 Alabama State Literacy Test. I would not explain what it was at first, but instead frame it as a pop quiz and let students get right to work. After a few frustrating minutes, I would interrupt and explain that the test they were working on was actually a literacy test that southern states forced African Americans to take in order to be able to vote. The exams included questions such as, when the Constitution was approved by the original colonies, how many states had to ratify it in order for it to be in effect? And does enumeration affect the income tax levied on citizens in various states? Considering the fact that I can't answer these questions off the top of my head, I think that this is an excellent illustration of how even though African Americans were granted certain rights by law, the government found a way to twist the laws and keep them from being successful. I thought that it was important to include several lessons on school integration because of all the accomplishments of the civil rights movement, it is one that students see the effect of every day. I would begin by having students read selections from the book Through My Eyes by Ruby Bridges. It is the story of how one six-year-old girl inter integrated a New Orleans elementary school in 1960 by herself. The story is told through the eyes of Ruby herself, as well as recollections from her family and outside perspectives. The book contains powerful images such as Ruby being escorted inside by the National Guard and the crowd that gathered outside to threaten her. I think that this is a great jumping off point because it shows how it was was the actions of everyday people, particularly the bravery of children, that made integration a reality. Even after integration laws were passed, many believed that it would never happen, but people like Ruby Bridges set the tone for the entire country. I would then jump backwards to talk about the legislation that made school integration possible. I would have students watch the virtual field trip from the Smithsonian in which a curator shows the viewer around the exhibition, Separate is Not Equal, Brown versus the Board of Education, and explains the artifacts. It is an excellent introduction into the details of the court case and its significance. The case was in fact not one case, but five different cases that were brought together to the Supreme Court to demonstrate that the policy of separate but equal was anything but fair. Students who were forced to go to segregated schools not only received unequal access to educational resources, but being separated from their peers had negative psychological and social effects. After watching this, I would ask students to create their own artifacts to include in an exhibit on Ruby Bridges. In order to understand how people felt about school segregation, both the good and the bad, I would have students listen to selections from the National Public Radio program, All Things Considered, the episode entitled Brown vs. Board, Letters to Eisenhower. In the program, actors read real letters that were written to President Eisenhower reacting to the ruling in the Brown court case that schools must be integrated. This is an excellent view into the minds of the American people. Some people supported the decision while others strongly opposed it. As an elementary school teacher using this resource, I would have to be careful about what I selected for students to listen to because some of the letters are extremely racist and use strong language. However, I think that this is an important resource to use because it helps students understand the struggles that the students involved in integration faced every day when they went to school. I would have students choose one of the letters to write a response to from the perspective of President Eisenhower. How would he explain his decisions and what evidence would he give as support? One of the figures of the civil rights movement that students are most familiar with is Rosa Parks. While she is a commonly studied figure, I still thought it was important to include her in my unit plan because her actions sparked one of the most well-known nonviolent protests of the movement. I would introduce the subject by reading Nikki Giovanni's beautifully illustrated picture book, Rosa, to the class. I like this book because it not only gives the typical story about how Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus, but also describes how her actions set the Montgomery bus boycott in motion. It mentions the different community groups that came together to plan the boycott, as well as how it was carried out. The story celebrates the quiet heroism of Rosa Parks, 
and oftentimes it was the smallest refusals to give in to injustice that set the wheels of the civil rights movement in motion. I would also have students explore some primary resources from the time period, such as those on the website, They Changed the World, the story of the Montgomery bus boycott. In addition to biographies of key figures involved in the boycott and a timeline of events, from the beginning of the boycott to desegregation, the website features a collection of news articles from Montgomery newspapers chronicling the events. I believe that it is important to look at primary sources related to the civil rights movement rather than just focusing on how it is represented in retrospect. In order to truly understand any event in history, you must look at how it was perceived at the time. While we already know the outcome of the boycott, looking at news articles chronicling it shows how it unfolded and what people were thinking as it happened. I would ask students to use the articles that they read and have them work in groups to create a news broadcast talking about the events described. It should include interviews with key figures involved in the boycott. I would then videotape the broadcasts and show them to students' parents at parent-teacher conferences or open house. The Montgomery bus boycott was not the only significant event from the civil rights movement that revolved around desegregation of public transportation. I would also have my students watch the film Freedom Riders that chronicles the six months in 1961 when white and black Americans traveled together on buses and trains through the Deep South. I believe that students will relate to this protest because rather than waiting for a change to happen, those involved chose to seize what they wanted. The film looks at the protest from the perspectives of the writers, government officials, and journalists who reported on the story. This film highlights the perseverance of the people involved in the civil rights movement. Despite facing violence and arrest, the writers always found a way to continue their journey. The supplementary website includes an interactive map where students can follow the bus route and read about the events that took place along the way. It also features biographies of several of the writers, many of whom went on to become important figures in the civil rights movement. After the lesson, I would ask students to reflect on why they think that the Freedom Riders continued their protest even when they were faced with the prospect of violence or arrest.